name is Adam Cullen. I'm a translator of Estonian literature into English. And this October, Restless Books will be publishing my translation, Three New Lawns, John the Skeleton. I'll just jump right into it. John the Skeleton. Grams and Gramps live in a cottage deep in the woods. It is a little bit crooked and a little bit under the weather. They've lived in this cottage for a long time. They raised their kids there, and now they're helping their grandkids grow up too. Growing up is easier when you have others to guide you. Grams and Gramps have an outdoor summer kitchen, and that's where John the Skeleton lives now. He used to live in the corner of a classroom where he helped children with their science lessons. After a while, John got a few broken bones, and the teacher felt sad for him. She thought a skeleton should get to retire after a long life of work. So she called Gramps to ask if he had any use for a bone man. Of course I do, Gramps said. He tinkered with his car until he got it started and drove into town. John gets a new home. When Gramps lifts John from the car, Gramps claps her hands, but she doesn't say anything because John is holding her new shawl between his finger bones. After Gramps puts the shawl in a safe place, she helps John get settled at the table in their summer, ki in their summer kitchen. It takes Gramps half a day to fix up the bone man. He brought most of the skeleton's missing bits from home from school, but two sets of finger bones on John's left hand need to be replaced. Gramps measures the skeleton's right hand and makes new matching phalanges out of wood. Gramps fetches Gramps' old hat, and Gramps fetches his best coat. It's a little musty, but there are two medals still pinned to it, one for donating blood and the other for being a good tractor driver. Got nowhere to wear it now. Dry her on, Gramps says to John. Grams and Gramps join John at the table and stare at him thoughtfully. He looks quite handsome, they think. John hears the lake sing. <clears throat> lake song, Gramps declares one wintry morning after taking a walk in the woods. He tells John that when the lake starts singing, it means the ice is thinning and the wind is strong. As the ice breaks up, the wind jiggles the pieces together. He says the sound of ice dancing is as fine as crystal. That's the lake's song. Beautiful, fragile, and unique. According to Grams and Gramps, the lake rarely ever sings. Grams' hands tremble as she rushes to find coats and hats and mittens for the grandkids while they eat their porridge. They have to hurry. As soon as the wind dies down, the singing will stop. Gramps realizes he's not strong enough to carry John to the lake and back. So the boy offers his mighty runner sled. Gramps sets John on the sled and secures him with rope. Now Gramps' hands are trembling too because he's worried they won't make it in time. When they get close to the lake, Gramps and Gramps ask the kids to hush. Everyone walks in silence. Then they stop and listen in awe for what feels like a long time. Eventually, the lake's lovely singing ends and they head back home. A neighbor is waiting in the yard. Where are you all coming from? She asks. Our church, Gramps replies. John and Gramps hatch a plan. Sometimes Grams and Gramps talk about what will happen when they die. In their neck of the woods, people share a tradition of being buried with an object that's special to them so they can bring it along to the next world. I've got some good years in me already and my health's not what it used to be, Gramps grumbles to Grams one afternoon. What are we to be putting in the coffin with you then, she asks. John? The minute she says this, Grams turns beet red. What will their friends and family think when they see Gramps and John cuddling together at Gramps' funeral? Gramps grins as he imagines the scene. Just think, he says. In hundreds of years, some scientists will find two hugging skeletons buried together and write scientific article articles about their discovery. After some thought, Grams decides he's right. Why not let two best friends share a wooden box together? John promises to be on his best behavior at the funeral. He doesn't want Grams to feel embarrassed.